Now, some of you may find this question a little o like overwhelming, but don't panic, actually. It's not as complicated as it looks if you break it apart and you decompose the problem, all right? So we've got four functions that have been made here, fw, fx, fy, and fz. And a list of names, sales, are defined as shown. So I've got uh, sales, that's my sales data, okay? The sales list represents all the sales made in a shop in one day. It is composed of sublists. So we've got a list within a list, basically. So that's one day, that's the second day, that's the third day, and so on. The values of each sublist have been written uh, as such. So we've got 10 to 2, and that indicates that 10 was sold at £2. Right. Now, the first question is relatively straightforward. It, wants to it gives you the list of all the functions, and it wants to know how many use a higher order function. Now, the best way to spot those is words like map, fold, and filter. Well, in this case, we can see map and fold. We can't see any other higher order functions. So therefore, the answer to that question should be two, right? But another that you might see is the word filter. In fact, I'll use the space over here for now. Now, you need to calculate the results of making the function calls listed in this table here using the function. So we've got FW and the two parameters that go in are four and three. Well, FW, four and three, so that would be four times three. Well, four times three, we know the result is 12. So it's not a list, we don't need any brackets, we're in a good place. Now, for FX sales, let's have a look here. So if C represents our sales, okay, so FXC, so FX sales, all right, with the data that goes in, we've got to map FW. What that basically means is we are going to use FW, which passes in two parameters, so 10 and 2, 2 and 25. So on each item in our list, all right, hopefully I've not lost you at this point, in each section, if you like, we're going to need to apply so fx is mapping this function. So fw has been used on each set. All right. So that should give you, realistically speaking, it should give you 20, 50, and 32. So how did I get to that? Because the function a times b is 10 times 2 gives you 20, 2 times 25 gives you 50, 4 times 8 is 32, and that's how I've got to my answer there. Now, we've now got another one, which may confuse you a little bit, all right? But let's break it down slowly. What you've got here is F, Z, E, all right? In this case, we're using F, Z, sales. So, We've got our sales data that's gone in, but it says, all right, and pay careful attention to this, we go with our brackets first, we are going to map each item, all right, so we're doing this first, which is FX, so we're using FX, which in itself uses FW there, which is A times B, so remember, we did that, so for fx, we've ended up with this list. So this here has ended up with 20, 50, and 32. Now, on this function that we've ended up with this list, stored as e, 20, 50, and 32, we then use fy on that. So 20, 50, and 32, the fold function that we are using, we are adding them to zero, okay? So that is 20 plus 50 plus 32, all right, which will give you 102. Feel free to watch that back, but hopefully you can see how I've carried out fx first and worked out what that is, and then applied fy, which was the fold, all right? Now, in the context of the shop, explain what the result of the function call fz sales represents. Well, 
it is the total all right of it is the total income for all products with this all you've got to do is show that you understand how this is worked so like they said here 10 indicates 10 units of a product 2 is how much they they're sold FZ sales is the total income for all products not just one it's doing them all so that's how that has worked that out so you can see why functional programming could be very useful in a shop environment